Hey, what's going on, everyone? <clears throat> Man, it is Wednesday morning here, about 8.30. I'm excited to be here with you guys. Happy New Year, by the way. If you are tuning in and you haven't heard from me this year yet, I just wanted to wish you guys all a happy New Year. And, you know, I made a commitment this year to do a couple more of these types of podcasts, to do more of these Ask Me Anything types of podcasts, because I find that my patients, my friends, my followers, they really, really enjoy learning new skills and learning new things about what I do in practice and also what we kind of do in the healthcare world. So my goal is a couple times a week that I'm going to do exactly what I'm doing right now is I'm going to turn on um, my computer, my uh, brand new software that here I'm working with. This is my first one, so if it breaks, please forgive me. I'm trying to use multiple windows so I can actually show you guys not only the camera that you're viewing with me, but also my screen so I can able to draw on the screen to help you guys visually see a little bit more about what I'm talking about and about what I'm doing. But also, you know, be able to start to educate you guys a little bit more virtually like this. I, th I think that people really kind of like this and um, they really uh, take heart in it. And I'm here to answer a lot of your guys' questions. I feel like I say the same thing over and over again in practice and over again on, on podcasts and different Google Hangouts I do. So, you know, today I want to kind of talk about cervical herniations. Matter of fact, I'm going to actually show you what a cervical herniation looks like. I'm going to walk you through a whole case, and then that way you'll have a really great understanding of, of what cervical herniation is, how it's diagnosed, and the different uh, possible treatment options that are out there for someone that has had a cervical herniation. I know a lot of people confuse herniation with pinched nerve. They can confuse it with uh, degenerative disc disease or disc bulging. So I want to kind of hopefully dispel a lot of those myths and give you guys a little bit better understanding of exactly what a herniation is and how we as doctors diagnose it, the imaging we use, and what you guys will ultimately need to know when and if you walk into your doctor's office with it. So let's kind of jump in real quick. I want to give you guys a case. Um, it happened in my practice. I'm not going to give you guys any names, but I want to let you know that this uh, woman came into my practice a while ago, and she literally had her head, hand over her head like this, and she said, Bo, I have been up all night, my neck's been hurting me, and I have numbness and tingling going down my arms. I have no idea what's going on. I went to the ER, and they just told me it was muscle spasms, and they sent me home with some pain medications. I've been taking pain medications now for the past six hours. I haven't slept because the pain's been so bad, and numbness and tingling is worsening. Um, what should I do about it? So the first thing is, is that anytime we have a potential disc herniation, as a doctor, we have to diagnose or we have to kind of figure out what is going on. So as a, a doctor, we look at multiple things. We look at this. Obviously, what is the subjective complaint of the patient? You know, where's the pain? Are they saying it's hurting in their neck? Is it down their hand? Is it radiating, etc.? Okay. How long it's been going on? What caused it. This woman fell asleep in that position and woke up some hours later and wasn't able to, to move her or turn her neck. Um, and then what's what has happened since the incident happened? So this lady unfortunately woke up, bad neck spasms, a lot of pain, and the radiation was going down her hand. So we did a bunch of objective testing. So we tested her grip strength. We tested her tactile, her ability to pick things up, her cervical rotation, different muscle tests around the different areas. And I determined that she was having some sort of deficiency or subluxation or whatever you guys want to call it in the lower portion of her neck. Matter of fact, she couldn't even bring her hand down because the pain was so incredibly bad. So, you know, as a chiropractor, that's the first time where we say, you know what, this is a red flag. Obviously, something is going on here, and we're not going to adjust this patient. So we just did some very, very minor kind of modalities trying to decrease the muscle spasms in her neck, and we sent her off for an x-ray. Now, a lot of people ask, but why do you start with x-ray when you think that it could potentially be a disc herniation? Wouldn't you automatically go for an MRI? And to be honest, in an ideal world, I would love to MRI every single patient. However, there's two big things. First off, x-ray is a lot faster to shoot and to be done. You walk in, you take the x-ray, you get the film back usually within just a few minutes versus MRI, which is hundreds if not thousands of individual slices or almost individual looking little x-rays that they have to compile and then they have to read the x-ray off of that. 
or excuse me, you have to read the MRI off of that. So it takes a little bit more time. Also, we know this, and if you didn't know this, but in, on MRI or on X-ray, you can only see bones, right? So you can't see soft tissues, you can't see nerves, you can't see capsules, you can only see bones. So when we first take an X-ray, what we're looking for is really any pathology that's happening in the bone. Is there, you know, a big tumor? Is there a lot of uh, uh, degeneration that's causing this? Is there a fracture? Is there something that's really kind of a, we use the term a quote unquote gross pathology that we could say, oh, that's what's going on right there. And so we always start with x-ray. It's kind of the, the gold standard, so to speak. So this patient went off, had an x-ray, came back, and we looked at the x-ray. And honestly, on the x-ray, it didn't look too bad. Matter of fact, she had some disc degeneration, but she was still very, very symptomatic. So I said, you know what? We're still not getting better. Um, why don't you go home? Let's see how it goes throughout the night, and we'll kind of go from there. So I get a call later that night, and she's really bad again. So she ends up actually going to another ER and having another, uh, uh, another consult with an ER doctor who gave her more pain medication, trying to decrease the spasms, and she showed up in my office the next morning. At this point, sure, the numbness and tingling is all the way down her hand, and she can't feel her, her, her first fingers. And then I knew, hey, look, this is obviously not, not just a, you know, a kink in her neck or anything like that. We have a, a pretty serious looking, what I thought at the time was a disc herniation. So I sent her off to get an MRI. And what I'm going to show you now is the MRI result that came back, and I'm going to actually read it with you so you guys can see what I'm seeing, and you guys can hear how I kind of look and I diagnose these types of MRIs, and then that helps you have a better understanding. If you have a question during this process, I know we're doing Facebook Live right now, you feel free to, to leave your comments or reactions there. Thank you for the little heart over there, whoever put that already. But, um, you know, I want to kind of talk to you guys about MRI first off. So in an MRI, the, the really great thing about MRIs is that they use what they call different weightings. So one stands for T1, there's another one called T2, there's even something they call the flare that they can use when they look and, and they shoot these MRIs. And what that means is they can actually take and color the tissues a different color to look for different things. So the easiest way I can explain it to you is like if you take a picture on your phone and then you have... Um, the filters, right? And you put filters over the actual film and it changes the depth, right? Like you can make it more green, you can make it more white, you can make it look Western, you can make it look modern, etc. right? Same thing happens with imaging and we use that on MRI. So what we are trying to look for can be different things. We can look for and say, hey, is there a tumor in the bone? Then I'm going to use a certain type of MRI imaging. Or is there a potential disc herniation? Then I'm going to look for a different type of, uh, of imaging. So the radiologist works with the doctor to kind of put those, those two uh, pieces together, so to speak. And that's how they determine what type of image they want to take when they have an MRI. So what I'm going to show you right now is the actual image of the MRI. So I'm going to turn this camera around real quick. So here we go. I'm going to flip this over here. So I hope you guys can kind of see this here. All right. So what we're looking at here, and I have my little cursor. If you guys can kind of see it here down the middle, I'm hoping that I can be able to, to show you guys this. But what we're looking at is an MRI of a person's upper cervical, their neck portion. So let me give you a couple little landmarks real quick. So this is the front of the person's mouth over here. So their eyes would be over here in the front. This is their buccal area or their mouth and their tongue area right through here. As you can see, this is where their brain is right here. Okay. Matter of fact, this is a small portion called your cerebellum of the brain. And this is a T2 image, and we know it's T2 because the spinal cord, which sits right through here, is colored white. Okay. Now, to talk a little bit about what I'm looking for, it's very, very simple. We are taught that we need to look for these three things. They're called the A, B, and C's, right? Isn't that old school, like, like kindergarten math, right? A, B, and C. So uh, A stands for alignment. B stands for bones, and C stands for cartilage, or soft tissue that we're looking for. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm just looking at the alignment of all of the bones here. I'm checking the alignment through the front. These are the different bones, by the way, of the neck, as you can kind of see. 
see the little squares here okay so those are the bones and they should have a certain curve matter of fact this this MRI doesn't have a real good curve of this person's neck so we know that there's a little bit of compromise going on somewhere in the neck and, and that would be correct right so that's our alignment then we're looking at the bones like I just said each of the square boxes are there each boxes here and the answer is yes there's boxes here and then the C is the cartilage, and that's where the soft tissues are, or the discs, right? So we're looking to see, is there disc space in each of one of these? And as you can see, as I go down, boom, 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 oh, we see something that's big that's pointing out here, okay? And then we're going to go a little bit lower, and we're a little bit lower, okay? Now, we do that for each structure, A, B, C. Alignment bones cartilage, alignment bones cartilage. And that can be for anything. That can be for even segments of the brain. The cerebellum, like we talked about. Is there, well, how's the alignment? Is it underneath, you know, this certain curve? Is there any bones? No, is it the C, is the cartilages, okay? So last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the actual spinal cord. So I should look at the alignment of the spinal cord, and it should be nice and smooth. Do you guys see how smooth this is right here? Perfect. So I'm looking for a nice smooth all the way down as I follow follow the different bones and boom. Now do I see it? Do you guys see this big old blob that's sticking out there? That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a disc herniation, which means the disc has been pushed out and is pinching right here on the spinal cord. Now also we know that there's nerves that come out of the holes of the sides of the each of the vertebrae when they conjoin right here and those go to your hands or to your feet or wherever those nerves go and like I said this patient came in with their hand over their head complaining of numbness and tingling down into their thumb and their first finger and this is the exact area right here where the disc has pushed backwards and hit the nerve and hit the cord causing the pain and causing the numbness and tingling down the actual hand also, it's pushed so far backwards that you can actually see that there's a little indentation on the backside here. So they call this the central canal, and they call this central canal stenosis. And stenosis means that there's narrowing in the actual canal. See how big the canal is here? And then see how it becomes narrowed, almost like it's like a traffic jam, right? So they call that central canal stenosis. So this person has a pretty significant or pretty severe disc herniation here at C6 and C7. All right, so we're doing Facebook Live here. You want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I walked in on Dr. Bo. <laughs> All right, so you guys have now seen the whole uh, cervical disc herniation here. Now the question is, is how bad is it and what can we do about it? Now, the radiologist will give a report to the doctor talking about, you know, hey, is this what they can term a mild, a moderate, or a severe disc herniation? You know, a lot of people come in and they say, Bo, I have degenerative disc disease, or I have bulging discs. What can be done about it? Okay. A degenerative disc or a bulging disc is typically on the very mild side. Matter of fact, if you're in the mild area, that means that you have usually less than two millimeters of disc bulge. Now, let's go right back to that picture that we just saw here. This right here is a severe disc bulge. So this is probably about, I would say, seven to eight millimeters of disc, of disc herniation or disc bulge that's going on back there, just so you guys have an understanding of what you're looking at here, okay? So... What that means now is, is when we go mild, moderate, and severe, that also translates into what type of care that we're going to be able to give a person. A normal person with a mild to a moderate type of disc herniation is a perfect candidate for chiropractic care. We can do different types of things, different modalities, different ways to adjust someone that can help to allow the disc to what they use the term is called reabsorb or help the disc hopefully try to move back into alignment. So anything usually less than about three or four millimeters is a really good candidate for chiropractic care, able to getting those discs to move back into the right position. Now, once we go beyond four millimeters of, of 
of herniation, usually that's when their a person will start to work with an orthopedic surgeon. And what they usually want to do is anywhere between five and seven millimeters of disc bulge, they want to try to usually go in and do some sort of spinal injections around the area to try to allow the muscles to decrease their inflammation and spasms. And sometimes, and I would say sometimes because because what the research is showing is usually less than 20% of the time, that disc will actually be able to move a little bit and the person will once again become asymptomatic, so they're not going to hurt. However, that's about 20% or less of the time. And then the last case is if they're usually over 7 millimeters, then they're usually looking almost every time at some sort of surgery to go in there and to remove the disc and to fuse the areas together or what they can do is actually insert now a fake artificial disc in that disc space to maintain um, the disc angles and to maintain the, the spacing in between there. However, that's newer science that's still coming out, so it's still kind of worrying about. So just kind of give you guys a recap of what this looks like when, when a person comes into my office. So, you know, disc herniation, what are we looking for? Just to recap, obviously numbness and tingling, sensation loss, motor weakness, right? And obviously pain's a really big one from there. The second thing is, is what types of testing do we do? We do obviously our in-office testing, having to do with subjective, objective, different muscle tests, different orthopedic tests. Then if it progresses to the next level, we look at different imaging. We start with x-ray, then we go to MRI, and if needed, we can also take a CT, <coughs> excuse me, and look at the, the actual structures and see what's going on there. And then lastly, what are the treatment options, right? Usually anything less than about three or four millimeters, you're looking at conservative treatment. That's chiropractic, physical therapy, massage, acupuncture, light stretching at home. Okay. Once we start moving up into the five to seven, then we're starting to incorporate our medical doctor and our orthopedic surgeon. And usually over anything over seven millimeters, or if there is central canal stenosis that's causing uh, radiating whole body patterns, then that's usually a pretty immediate case for surgical intervention. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of get on here today, guys and talk to you guys a little bit about the things that I see every day in practice. I hope that you know this is useful for you. Um, I will also be posting this obviously here on Facebook, but also on YouTube. So if you guys have questions, you can feel free to go over to my YouTube channel at Dr. Bo. Leave your question below, or if you're watching this on YouTube right now, leave your question below. I really try to go in there and answer all the questions that I can um, and really help you guys out. And I just want to say, hey, happy new year to you guys. I look forward to doing this as much as I possibly can. I'd love to do it at least a couple times a week. And uh, just to get on here and to communicate with you guys and help you guys in your life, in your family, and uh, your adventure. So have a great day, and I look forward to uh, serving you guys there. Bye.